I just don't want to instantly crap on this week's Raw just for the sake of crapping on it, even though I probably could do so. I just have to say this, is that it was really hard for me to get a sense of whether or not this company was actually putting forth a real effort to try and make it work, or if they've already, in a way, kind of sort of thrown in the towel, or is it just a matter of they really don't know what the hell to do? I, I don't know. It was another show that wasn't very good. That shouldn't surprise anybody. They just haven't been good shows lately. And, you know, when you want to talk about lackluster buildups to a WrestleMania, considering what's on the line for this particular year's WrestleMania, or maybe, frankly, what fucking is, and who knows, this has to be one of the worst buildups that I have ever, ever seen. Piss poor character development, piss poor storytelling, um, a lack of featured performers being involved in the show on a week on week out basis. There's just not a lot to care about, frankly, if we're being so perfectly honest. Um, it doesn't mean that there weren't good things on the show. There were a couple of things that were good, but they were too few and too far between. And while this company touched on a lot of things pertaining to WrestleMania, it was just another night where it was just off, it didn't come together, and it didn't freaking work. Now, the way the show kicked off was actually quite good. You know, what they did with Stephanie McMahon and Roman Reigns, that was good. It was short, sweet, to the point. Roman being the type of no-gives-a-fuck badass that he should be. He says what he says, and then he gets the fuck out of Dodge for the time being. Now, however, I have to point out how stupid this is, again, from a storytelling standpoint. Stephanie McMahon is the boss. Roman Reigns is the employee. You're really going to allow him to walk off scot-free 13 days before your husband has to defend his world title at the biggest show of the freaking year. You would think that you would do everything you could to make Roman Reigns' life an absolute living hell. You would put him on every single match on the entire show, or you would have him wrestle the entire roster, something. And instead, she did nothing it's bad enough that she's getting so much television time when, frankly, there is no ultimate payoff to her getting any of that television time. Now you sit here, and it's yet another example of how idiotic the WWE is when it comes to their authority figures. Why would your authority figures do these type of things that make absolutely no fucking sense? I mean, if I've got something fucking with me and trying to take something from me, I would try and do everything I could in a position of power to make sure that that doesn't happen, to do everything I could to significantly weaken that opponent, if not entirely eliminate them from the equation. And instead, they do nothing. And then later on, the thing with Roman sitting there coming after Triple H when he gets there, you know, I thought it would have worked better maybe if Roman actually had the sledgehammer. Again, it kind of worked, and I like what they did with him here. It was actually somewhat good, at least, compared to some of the shit we've been doing. But it's far too little, and it's far too late, and they waited way too damn long to actually really dive into trying to create some type of animosity here between Triple H and Roman Reigns. In particular, they waited way too goddamn long to do anything interesting or compelling with Roman Reigns. They did it this week, regardless of what the knuckleheads in fucking Philadelphia think. It was actually good. It just, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. Just like this whole shit with AJ Styles and Chris Jericho. You know, I've already talked about some of the crap, but here we go. You've got this big, long match that is a rematch from SmackDown between AJ Styles and Kevin Owens. Now, you're already at a significant disadvantage in terms of the amount of people that are not healthy enough to compete at WrestleMania. I don't even need to run through the laundry list of people that will not fucking be there. So somebody decided two weeks before WrestleMania, let's go out there and have these guys fucking spot fest the fuck out of this show for 20 goddamn some odd minutes. Just to sit there and arrive at a finish where Jericho is going to cost Styles a freaking match anyways. Now that makes sense. That was good. Why do we need this long fucking rematch that I'm sorry just because there's a bunch of fucking spots doesn't mean it's any fucking good. I ask you to tell me what type of story that match actually told and it told absolutely none until the goddamn finish. So if that was the story that needed to be told, and it was the story that needed to be told, why fucking waste our time with all this other shit? I mean, I'm sitting there watching them like, okay, you guys have done a bunch of spots. Can we get to the fucking point here? What the hell is going to happen? Can we just wrap this up now? At least they wrapped it up in a good way. But then they come back later on in the night, and they do Fandango versus Jericho. And now AJ Styles is coming out to distract Jericho, but Jericho still wins. So on the one hand, the distraction... Cost the guy a match, but on the other hand, the distraction doesn't matter. Just all types of fucking confusing here. 
Now, with that said, one of the few highlights of the show was actually Kevin Owens, believe it or not. I love what they had him do later on in the night with the fucking triple threat match, and he gets out Zack Ryder and Stardust and Sin Cara. That's how a heel like him should be acting, talking about the fact that he's giving people that deserve it a real opportunity, but all the while it's three fucking jobbers. But what gets really ridiculous about this is the fact that after he's confronted by The Miz and Sami Zayn and Dolph Ziggler, he goes to these extents. The last couple of weeks, Dolph Ziggler's been feuding with freaking Stephanie and the authority like no other. Last week, if I recall correctly, the whole stipulation of the match between him and Triple H was if that Dolph Ziggler didn't win. He wouldn't get a match at WrestleMania. So that way, we turn around exactly one week later, and Stephanie is granting him a match at fucking WrestleMania. Who writes this shit? Why would we even fucking bother caring about anything? If you sit there and make this big, huge stipulation of a feature match one week, and then literally the next week, you undercut said stipulation by giving the guy what he fucking wanted anyway, which was a match at WrestleMania. And now you put him in a position, not only does he have a match, where he could potentially win your title, and for all we fucking know, that's where the hell they're going. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Just unbelievably stupid. But Kevin Owens on this night was actually pretty good. I know a lot of people are happy to see Terry Funk. And believe me, I was too. Terry Funk chainsaw Charlie is fucking cool. And you know, I, I understand in part the approach of what they're doing here with Dean Ambrose in terms of, you know, trying to build up the fact that he needs to go to a whole different level with the Mick Foley's and the Terry Funks and the so on and so forth. But it's just nothing more than a cover for the fact that Brock Lesnar isn't fucking there, number one. Number two, I think if they were going to go down this route, it would probably be more effective if you were actually having them engage in conversations with people that had actually previously wrestled Brock Lesnar. I know it seems crazy, but The Rock, John Cena, The Undertaker, Big Show, Triple H, all seem to be much more logical people for what you're trying to build up to, then Mick Foley and Terry Funk in particular as well, if all of this crap with the barbed wire baseball bats and the chainsaws and the freaking flaming shards of ass tacks don't get used at WrestleMania in that match, then what the fuck was the point of all this? It was stupid. And again, it was a poor cover for the fact that, again, Lester wasn't fucking there. And no, Heyman being there on commentary doesn't get the job done. He's not the one ultimately wrestling Ambrose at Met WrestleMania in the fucking street fight, period. Then you've got Big E taking on Rusev, and here's what I don't understand. You've never really done much to really try to get the heel faction League of Nations over. You've got guys in a group together. It makes some sense, you know, an international conglomeration. You've given them a name that kind of works. Woodrow Wilson would be proud as he's watching Birth of the Nation, that racist fuck. So... You sit there and have Becky beat him. This still books of shit. I don't know. Uh, you know, they had this thing with Big Show. Apparently now we're supposed to like him again. Now he's pandering to the fucking Philly crowd. And this all sets up social outcasts, which all sets up a Kane returning. Now you got Big Show hugging Kane. And Kane choke slamming people. You know, they threw Kane at it this week. And, you know, it's kind of like, eh, at least he's not in a big-time featured role. Eh, he kind of serves a purpose, but eh, is that the best that we got? And you got Charlotte versus Natalia. And, of course, the only way that they really know, it seems like, on Raw, primarily to build up a Divas feud, is to have somebody wrestle a match and then have the opponent or other opponents at the big show sitting there on commentary. And instead of those two being focused on Charlotte, maybe trying to fuck with Charlotte, interfere with the match, maybe cost her the match, they're too busy clucking at each other like a couple of hens, so that way Charlotte can win, and it's just, ugh. They're too busy clucking at each other, and I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to build heat and animosity between those two, but that's fine. But you still have to tie it into the fact that Charlotte is the Divas champion, and that's who they should be really going after. It is whatever. It is whatever. They got the... Bubba Dudley freaking battling our truth so that way Goldust can come out and try and make the save so that way the Usos come out. Hey, you know, it's just my thing is you're going to have this seven-man ladder match for the IC title again this year at WrestleMania. You've got the Dudleys, you've got the Usos, you've got the fucking New Day. The Dudleys have turned heel. You're transitioning to the New Day face. The Usos are clearly face. I don't know. TLC tag title match at Mania seems to work better for me. And furthermore, when we're talking about the whole thing with the freaking IC title and that schmoz, 
There are so many different directions you could have gone with this. They didn't have Ryback or Callisto on this show. If any title match deserved to have a schmaz, like six, seven people fighting for it, it was a U.S. title this year. Kevin Owens has at least done enough to at least get some type of feature match at WrestleMania. While I would vomit at it and fart at it, there is something there for a Sami Zayn and a Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. Now, maybe you don't want to go there. Well, then go with fucking <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. Throw him in there so that way Owens can beat the piss out of him. I don't know. Do a triple threat and throw the Miz in there. I don't know. I don't care. But you didn't need to sit there and make a seven-man freaking match just so that way Ryback and Callisto go one-on-one -on -one for the U.S. title. That's the belt that deserved the schmaz. The IC title deserved either a one-on-one -on -one or no more than a triple threat match. Instead, of course, it's the U.S. title where we're going one-on-one, -on -one, and it's the IC title that is a fucking schmaz because this company is stupid. And speaking of stupid, we get to the whole Vince's announcement. You're building up to this the entire night. And I'm personally thinking, hey, this is where Vince announces that he's going to be the guest referee inside of Hell in a Cell. And I ultimately think that's the decision we'll get next week. Because that's the only way this really ties together. It really makes any type of sense whatsoever. The funny thing is about this is we now got the most sensible thing about this entire story between Vince and Shane and Shane and Taker and Vince and Taker. Now we've got a reason for Taker to fight this match at WrestleMania. We've got a reason for Taker to care. We've got a reason for Taker to win. If he doesn't win, it's his last Mania match. But instead of saving this for the end, 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 instead of opening the show with this, instead of having one or both of Shane and Taker actually show up on the show, instead of emphasizing just how big of a deal this was and just how huge this was, Vince makes the announcement, fucking basically leaves the ring, so that way we can get, wash your ass, Ambrose, come out for the goddamn main event. Like, what the fuck? This is like big time, potentially earth-shattering news. And we don't even follow up on it. We dive right into a main event match between Dean Ambrose and fucking Braun Strowman. I mean, that is a significant stipulation. That is a significant announcement. The most sensible storytelling element there has been for this entire Shane Taker Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania 32. And we just basically casually throw it fucking out there and then we move the fuck on. It would only figure that this company would have take or lose at WrestleMania and have this be his last WrestleMania because this story has been so fucking stupid. What an appropriate way for this company to send off one of the true greats of all fucking time. What a slap in the fucking face. I can't blame him if he doesn't want to be involved with this shit anymore. And speaking of shit, oh my god. Dean Ambrose, Braun Strowman main event. Yeah, uh, my roided up younger version of Uncle Udo is sitting there main eventing Raw. You know this ain't going to go well. The crowd is chanting, this is boring, this is boring. And I'm sorry, you could sit there and direct it at Braun all the fuck you want, want to blame him all the fuck you want, but it takes two to tango. And if Dean Ambrose was that goddamn good, and if Dean Ambrose was that truly fucking special... The crowd wouldn't be chanting, this is boring, this is boring, during his fucking matches. Just, if anything else, out of respect to him. This was bad. I mean, who the fuck thinks that this is the type of main event that you want to see for a Raw when you're less than two weeks out from WrestleMania? This was terrible. And this whole thing about Dean being unanimously over, he was unanimously over. They're not going to chant, this is boring, during one of his fucking matches, no matter who the fuck he's facing. Think about a Philly crowd doing that to a Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock when they're at the top. Or fucking CM Punk or Daniel Bryan. Or even a South Rollins. They're chanting, this is boring, during Dean Ambrose main eventing the fucking show. Oh, but he's unanimously over. Ah, fuck you. He ain't either. Unbelievable. But what a ridiculously dumb dick position to put a guy, one of the future standard bearers of your company, one of the guys that is going to have to help carry WrestleMania for you because the writing sure is shit. The storytelling sure is shit. You need Ambrose to come out smelling like a million bucks here. And putting them in these type of dumb dick situations most certainly isn't helping. I mean, it, it's like, on the one hand, this company touched on almost everything that pertained to WrestleMania, except for Ryback and Kalisto. But the problem is, 
is you're utilizing Vince and Stephanie so much, and at the end of the day, there is a limited payoff to the utilization of these two in such an increasing fashion on the road to WrestleMania. Vince isn't wrestling at Mania. And as of this moment, we haven't even gotten an announcement he's going to be involved in that. You would think the only other logical step to go to stack the deck. Uh, he's made that big announcement about Taker. He's going to protect his bitch. Is he's going to become the guest referee for that match. Otherwise, this makes absolutely no fucking sense. And again, just speaks to how stupid the WWE is when it comes to booking their authority figures. You're going to put everything on the line, yet you're not going to do everything you can to stack the fucking deck to make sure that you come out successful. Makes no goddamn sense. What Stephanie did was stupid. What Vince would did was completely fucking stupid. Why, if you've already basically gotten Taker to agree to the match, why do you need to throw out that stipulation? I mean, this is just that throw the shit against the wall and hope it fucking sticks crap. It doesn't flow. It doesn't come together. It would have been different if Taker said no. It would have been different if Taker said, I'm not going to do it. If Taker said that I don't want to do this anymore. If Taker said, find your own man to fight your own fucking battles or fight your battles your fucking self. Then damn Vince sit there and throw out the stipulation makes a lot of sense. He's basically got Taker by the nuts and doesn't have to let go. But now he's trying to grab Taker by the nuts when there's no reason to grab the dude by the nuts because Taker's already consented and said your son's blood is going to be on your hands. Sounds like to me he's willing to fight at WrestleMania, so why the fuck would you put one of the greatest box office attractions you've ever had, one of the biggest stars, or one of your greatest legends of all time career on the fucking line for absolutely no fucking reason? None! Absolutely no reason! And then Stephanie, after Roman has basically pumped you out, you're going to turn tail and run. Instead of trying to stack the deck, instead of trying to do all this other shit to make it as difficult as possible for him, to make his path impossible for the rise of the Roman Empire, you just basically sit there and let it fucking happen and then you leave. And then you sit there one week after making it a big deal that Ziggler, if he didn't beat Triple H, if he didn't beat God himself, wasn't going to get a mania match. Well, apparently God is truly forgiving because he's so forgiving of the fact that he forgets the fucking stipulation of the match a week ago and you just give Dolph Ziggler a goddamn match anyway. We're devoting so much television time to the McMahons. Unfortunately, it's not the McMahons that are actually wrestling and competing at WrestleMania 32. Yeah, you, know, you got some glimmers of hope with Roman, but again, it's too little and it's far too late. You know, anything that's going to happen good out of this has to come post WrestleMania. Now it's too fucking late. Uh, they ruined it already. They confused the audience by going to Ambrose, and they did stupid shit with Roman. And now you do something good. The crowd's going to shit on that, too, because they're so used to shitting on everything else. And frankly, when the shows are this bad, I can't even blame the audience in some ways for shitting on everything or associating everything with being shit, even though there are still those occasional glimmers of light and beacons of hope that it's not all bad. But again, and I've talked about this so much in previous years, too, when you utilize these vets, when you utilize these part-timers, there is something to be said about the lack of appearances by these biggest feature performers heading into your biggest show of the year. If they cannot care enough to sh by bother to show up every week, why should the fans show up to watch Raw every week, either in person or via a television screen? Furthermore, if they seem to only half-ass care about the biggest show of the year, why should fans completely and fully, totally care about the biggest show of the year if, again, these featured performers can barely be bothered to show up? You got very little Triple H this week, and when you did, it was most, mostly getting his teeth kicked in before he cut tail and run. You had absolutely no Brock Lesnar again. You had no Shane McMahon again, and no Undertaker again, especially with that big announcement, that huge stipulation that was announced for Taker at WrestleMania. Taker doesn't appear. Shane doesn't appear. There's no Brock Lesnar again. It's just... Oh, it's frustrating. It, it cannot possibly be that hard to write at least one decent story. And they've gone off track. So with the closest thing they had to a really good story, which honestly was Ambrose and Lesnar, they've gotten so off the tracks now. And in part, that's been hurt by the fact that Lesnar, again, hasn't fucking been there. You know, you just, the only positive result that could come out of what they've done with Ambrose and Lesnar lately, or mostly Ambrose, because again, Lesnar can't be bothered to fucking be there, is Ambrose must go over at WrestleMania 32, period. Otherwise, this is all for not a complete fucking waste of time. And let's face it, when you look at that horrendous main event that they had, and you look at all the other dumb dick shit stuff they did this week in terms of storyline development and trying to build up tensions between characters, it is all a colossal waste of fucking time. 
you know they're having Roman go over at 32, and a lot of you are going to shit on it. And frankly, the story hasn't been that good. And when we finally get to the point where something's good, it's far too little. And it's way too goddamn late. You know, the, the, the fact that you've got this curiosity between Shane and Taker, you know, after you get past the initial appeal of Shane McMahon being back, you look, and it's very hollow. And there's not much there. And then when they finally decide to try and give you some type of storytelling element to try and make you care about this as a little bit more than it's just a curiosity, even that announcement makes no fucking sense. Because again, if Taker has already agreed, Taker ain't going to WrestleMania to lose. This is a dude that in his entire career has lost once at WrestleMania. If I'm going to put my chips on anybody, from Vince McMahon's standpoint, it was smart in terms of WrestleMania. There's nobody I'd want in my corner more than The Undertaker. But Undertaker has already agreed, basically, to be your mercenary, be your hired gun, be your no-fucks-given bitch. So then you sit there and basically try to potentially take that away from yourself by having him lose and being done forever without giving any type of protections at all. It's just so stupid. Dolph Ziggler wrestling and losing to God just the next week to get a match right back with Taker. The New Day going over the League of Nations in any way when you need to be building up the League of Nations as credible threats is stupid. You've got this long-ass match between AJ Styles and Kevin Owens that people already saw on SmackDown. Now you bring it on Raw. All of these fucking reckless spots for no goddamn reason just to get to the point which was Jericho screwing Styles just so that way a little bit later on in the night you make Styles look stupid because he can't effectively distract Chris Jericho. I mean, who writes this shit? And who thinks when they're sitting there at their script readings, sits there and says, oh, that's a good one. Oh, y'all yeah, get yourself there, Kevin. Oh, Vince, I think this is just splendid. If anything, it should just be called McMahon Mania because you guys are really the tops. Where's my carrot? I mean, holy fucking Christ. They got one more Raw. I don't even count SmackDown because a lot of people don't fucking watch it anyways. Raw is the show that matters, let's face it. And besides, if a lot of the shit they do on SmackDown, they just do it again on Raw anyways. The company like AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, then why the hell would I care about SmackDown? And, you know, it's really stupid to throw Brock Lesnar at SmackDown when half of your fucking Raw audience, frankly, doesn't watch SmackDown. If I'm going to utilize Lesnar, I'm going to utilize them on the show that gets more viewership, the show that matters more, my A show. So, of course, the WWE would take an A player for them and put them on the B show that a lot of people aren't going to fucking watch. Because that just sums up this company in a nutshell. Fucking stupid. This show is stupid. This build of WrestleMania has been stupid. Hopefully, because of some of the stipulations and performers involved, we can get enough spots and enough bullshit to fool us into thinking that WrestleMania 32 won't indeed be fucking stupid.